Hi, Justin. Hey, Connie, um, how are you? Okay, so so I'm great. So, um, by the way, the purpose of this interview, there are three reasons for this interview. One is that um, uh, I'm um, I'm a product developer, and uh, I've been working alone. And I think I would like to go the route of hiring a business coach. And the second reason is um, after I find out what it is that you offer, I would like to share that with other people who might be looking for a good fit for a business coach. And the third reason is uh, maybe you can just, um, uh, people can find out where to reach you. Sure. Okay. Absolutely. So, uh, so those are the reasons why I'm doing this. So I thank you. I thank you for, for uh, joining me for this short chat. Okay. Sure. So the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like you to uh, interview, uh, in, uh, introduce yourself. I'd like you to introduce yourself. Sure. My name is Justin Calvitz. I'm the uh, CEO of Spatula Consulting. Okay. And uh, you are a business coach, true? Yeah, I, I, I like the word uh, business partner more than business coach, but uh, yeah, that's that's what I do. Well, I like the word business partner also. <laughs> okay, so can you tell me exactly what you do when somebody works with you? Sure, I, my my main goal- in uh, By the way, Justin, I, I think this is kind of, can you turn, the volume is kind of low. Is, oh, I can I, hear you well. Oh, okay. Okay. So maybe it's just on my end. Okay. Okay. Sure. Yeah. So really what I do when I work with, um, with anybody, and this is whether I provide free advice or have a conversation with somebody or work with them short-term or long-term, is I, I try and understand what you are trying to get to with your business, with your product. Uh, is there a challenge that you're trying to overcome? Is, it a, is there a business that you're trying to build from the ground up? Is there a, a sales goal or a profit goal or a distribution goal that you're trying to reach? And, and I, I work with people in, in all different categories um, from nonprofits to product to services. Um, and and those, those questions relate to, to all, all people that I work with. What are you trying to accomplish? And then basically work backwards from what challenges have you had? What have you tried? I work with them to figure out what's going on in their business, the dynamics of it all, and then help them put a plan in place to get there. The thing that I do a little differently is I also then help people, because I can give you a roadmap on how to get to California, but if you don't know the twists and the turns along the way and what happens when you hit this roadblock and there's a detour, in business, the same thing happens. So I try to help people not only put the plans in place, but also walk them through and be a partner with them as they go through that journey and trying to overcome those challenges or reach those goals. That sounds great. Now, I'm just looking at, at uh, your background and I see spatula. Mm -hmm. Spatula, can you explain that? Yeah, so, you know, it's a funny name. Um, it, you know, it's not the pinnacle consulting or whatever. When I started this business, I had been in corporate um, business for over 30 years in big businesses and small businesses and consumer and B2B. And, and throughout the years, I have come across a lot of what you would consider consultants. And so, of course, you know, I, I tell my buddies that I'm going to start this, this business and I'm going to create this a couple of years ago. And they're like, oh, you're going to be one of those guys. Buzz, buzzwords and processes and tell people what they do wrong. And, and I said, no, 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 I'm going to be different. I, I just want to help people. And I want to be that, you know, cost effective tool that helps them get their, get, reach their goals and get the job done. And they're like, ah, oh, you're a consultant. You're going to be one of those guys. So I wanted to create a name that inspired getting stuff done at a cost effective rate. And, and in your kitchen, the one thing that you grab day in and day out to do all kinds of different projects is your spatula. It's not, you know, that high-end mixer. It's not that highly specialized tool that only does one thing. You use your spatula for all kinds of different things. And because I'm not sales or marketing or operations or sourcing, I do sort of all of that stuff depending on what your business needs. It just seemed to fit and be a name you remember. Um, yes, I certainly remember it. And I, I looked you up 
Um, I looked up your company and it seems like you do a lot of different things. Um, when did you get started with doing this? So about two years ago, I had a, some, some changes going on at the, at the business I was working with and running. And I decided that, um, you know, I just wanted to do something different. I had talked about it for years. And quite honestly, um, my wife was the one who finally said, hey, it's okay to, you should go do this. This is probably a good time for you to try this. We've been talking about it for years. And I said, are you sure? I've got two kids going into college. I've got, you know, uh, you know, uh, kind of the breadwinner of the family, all that stuff. My wife uh, does a labor of love working with children. And I said, um, you know, are you sure? She's like, you, go do this. Go, ha- go help other people with all the stuff you've done and, and try this for a little while. So that was, that was sort of my, my okay to go try uh, and start my own thing. Okay, well, it sounds great. So you're having fun doing this? I, I'm having a great time. I, I tell you, I meet so many amazing people like yourself and um, have been able to uh, learn more. You know, it's, it's a different world when you're, when you're doing it sort of from this side of the desk and in this way, but it's been a, a great experience. I really have, um, have enjoyed it. And, uh, you know, again, I get, to, I get to help a lot of people. I, I, I come across so many people that I don't want to say have been fleeced um, because I don't think it's intentional by companies, but you know, people that have gone into business and you hear them wasting hundreds of thousands of dollars and not getting anything for all their investment. And the business probably could have been a lot better off if they would have just had the right advice and the right guidance from the beginning. And, you know, it's, it's people like, like yourself. I, I, I want to start a business. I want to launch products. I want to do this. Great ideas. And you see people just sort of guiding them with, well, if you do this and pay this and spend this and put this money in, and it doesn't have a, a, a longer term vision of how they're going to succeed. It's just, we can do this for you. Therefore, you should spend money with me. And that really, to me, is, is um, something I'm trying to kind of fix, you know, for people. It's like, take a deep breath. Don't waste all that money. Here's the better way to do this. So, you know, that is so interesting because just just about one hour ago, I got a call from somebody who's been, I guess you can call fleeced. Uh, many times. Uh, We all have been. Mm -hmm. And she she called me up to find out if I could recommend somebody to work with. So I said, you are in luck, because I'm just going to be talking to somebody. And I think he's incredible. And uh, she she actually wanted to know if you know anything about a good manufacturer for the product. Do you have contacts with manufacturers? Yeah, absolutely. I do. um all kinds of different manufacturing overseas and in the U.S., um, just depending on what the needs are. Uh huh. Okay, good, because uh, she's going to call you too. I believe she just connected with you on LinkedIn. Oh, um, I saw that pop up. That's funny. Yes, yes, because she's very interested, and I'm sure there are a lot of people who want to work with an honest person who yeah. says, this is what I can do and this is what I can't do. Yeah, and there's a, there's a big difference between doing the right things and spending money and it not working versus people spending money on things that don't really make sense in the bigger picture. A quick story, I worked with one client who um, was really excited because this company convinced them that they could get them on the Today Show. They were just starting their business off. And of course, when you hear, I developed a product and it can be on the Today Show, your eyes light up and you're like, this is amazing. This is our big break. This is gonna be great. But they didn't have anything in place to to support it so they spent all this money they did all these things to invest in inventory they got on the today show they got a blip of a of a statement they got a few inquiries their website got a bump and then it all went away because they didn't have a plan in place and they basically now you can't go back on the today show a year later and go no 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 wait now listen to us and so they they invested forty or fifty thousand dollars, all all the things considered around this event because this PR group had convinced them it was the right thing, but the timing and the support and the next steps weren't in place. But they did it, but they didn't have anything to show for it. And those are the kind of things that people don't really help you think through when you're a small business owner. So exactly. So you you can look at it from afar and think about what to do and then what to do next, maybe to leverage that today show. 
Um, yeah, a lot of times it, it's it's the money that you don't spend that is the best decision. Um, you know, and that that's really where you know I I try and come in and say, look, what what is your budget? What are you hoping to do? In, in the business world, there's there's sort of this: you either have a lot of time or you have a lot of money, and you sort of have to figure out what those two, where you're at in that in that realm, and what you're trying to accomplish based on how much time you have and how much money you have. And then you put a plan in place based on what you're trying to accomplish with those two things in mind. So uh, you sound uh, like you know what you're talking about. Now, I want to know, Justin, what do some of your clients say about you? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> you have to ask them. I, I think what you would hear from most people are, um, I think, a whole host of things that of value that I bring to them. You know, again, I'm, I'm not just, hey, help, help us get sales distribution or help us with a marketing plan. It's really the, the day-to-day business, what I call micro decisions that are probably the, the bigger parts of, of um, what I help with. Um, and sort of how does that fit in and zoom into the decision, but zoom out to figure out where we're trying to get to. And then, more than more importantly with me, I'm, I just enjoy life. Um, you know, you, I laugh, I have fun. You, people know about my kids when they work with me and my, my dogs and my, you know, my, what's going on in my day to day, because it's, it's, that's, that's what we're all about is we're, we're about life and business coming together. And, and so, you know, working with me, I sort of feel is just, um, that's why I say business partners, because I love hearing about your families and what's going on in your life as much as I do your business, because it's all part of what you are are experiencing. Okay, well, that's great. So uh, I will tell you, I'm a grandmapreneur, <laughs> by the way. I'm a grandmapreneur, and I, I was a teacher, a writing teacher for uh, 40 years. Wow. Okay, so I knew, I know everything there is to know about writing and grammar and what they call plain language and all those things. But as far as being uh, a business owner, I'm uh, learning about it. We okay? all, we all are. Uh, it sounds like I could probably get some advice from you on some of my some of the writing stuff. <laughs> well, good, good. That would that would be great. That's very easy for me. But some of the things that are difficult for me are um, like I don't understand SEO. I have a website. I don't know uh, how to. Uh, get people to notice it. Mm -hmm. I don't know about Google ads. I've spent money on Google ads in the past and gotten nothing from it. I've done uh, some Facebook paid advertising. I've gotten almost nothing from it. Do you help with that? Yeah, very common. And so this is where, um, you know, the way I work is I have a network of people across the globe in different areas. So I, I work with two or three really, really top level people with Amazon, for instance. I've got um, just throughout the years, because I've done it for so long, I've sort of narrowed down who the good people are and who the talented people are and what price points different agencies charge for search engines and website management and um, data, you know, database mining and all those kind of things that go around um, uh, client and, and digital direct to consumer. And so that's, that's sort of how I work is I work with these groups because I vetted them. I know what kind of people they are. I know what they charge. I know that they're, they do their, their, their job well. Um, and then I help you sort of, if I just hooked you two up, you may still not be successful. So I also help sort of navigate the relationship between the two and have discussions with these different groups to say, this is what we're trying to accomplish and this is what they're telling you and this is what the risks are and and sort of liaison back and forth as well. So let me ask you a question, um, Justin, if I hired you and was partnering with you, would I pay extra for your uh, connections to help me like with Facebook ads? Yeah, so, be extra? Yeah, so those, those you would just pay directly to those groups. And, and through those, so there there might be extra of cost involved in the business to say we need to invest in database management for the website, or somebody's going to manage your Amazon for you, and this is what those fees might be. Uh, or if you're working with an outside sales group, here's the percentage that you would pay them based on those. So there are other costs that could come up, 
but in the bigger scheme is I try and save you more than you would spend if you were out on your own doing those. Well, that, that's really good to know because I've, I've been talking to a lot of business coaches and their, their rates are so high, I would have absolutely nothing left over <laughs> to, to get, you know, to implement what they suggest. Yep. And, and that's something you, you have to listen. The business world isn't cheap, right? And, and you have to spend money somewhere generally to get products to market and you have to be real about them. And that's, that's sort of part of the discussion in, in all of this is, you know, what how, kind of, what are you going to do based on how much income do we have? What are we going to spend? Where can we spend? When do we spend? And, and that's, that's all part of the, the strategy conversation. Okay. Well, that, that sounds really great to know. And I'm sure a lot of other people would have questions like that. So I'm going to get a little bit specific. Um, I'm an inventor mm -hmm. and I have a product uh, called Tip and Split and I did get a lot of publicity about it. Um, it was on um, the Today Show, um, The View, um, it was on QVC and so many other things. But what I wanna focus on now is a service. And I wanna ask you if you think that we are a good fit about that. <laughs> and my, my service is that uh, because I'm getting older, I, uh, I'm thinking about my grandchildren. I have six of them and future generations. And I want to pass down my memories to them. Mm -hmm. And I want to help other people pass down their memories because they're going to be gone and nobody's going to know about them after they're gone. So it's up to us to let them know what we want them to know about us. And um, uh, so my new program is, I, I'm giving lessons on how to write your story in as little as one month, okay? And I make it very easy to do. Uh, it's based on pictures and, and captions. So um, for example, um, um, I, have, I have mostly pictures, but I have a few words that uh, I wanna share with them because I have one section called namesakes because I want people my generations to know how they got their name, if it was just out of the blue or if it came from something. So in my family, we, uh, we chose our names um, to honor people who were deceased. I'm, I'm Jewish mm -hmm. and um, uh, everybody was named after somebody, except um, people might wonder about my name because my name is Connie. And that is not a Jewish name, <laughs> far from it. So how did I get my name? Well, <clears throat> my, uh, my mother named my, my older sister, Sharon, and that was named after uh, a deceased grand grandfather. And then uh, she said to my dad, you get to name this one. So he chose my name to be Francis. And she said, oh, so how'd you get that name? And he said it was his old girlfriend. So my mom was absolutely furious and the, there happened to be a nurse standing right over her and on her name tag, it said Connie. So I was named after the nurse, Connie. <laughs> so um, I think that's an interesting story to pass down to my, uh, my future generations because they might be curious how I got my name. Sure. And it's, it's, there's so much lost in that and the translations, you know, between generations as well. I, I, it's a, you know, it really is something that you, you hear it all the time. Oh, I wish I would have asked these questions or got to know this a little bit more. It's, it's something right. that you want to I ask. meet so many people who say my grandma just died. I wish I had interviewed her and known about this. Yeah. So my, it's my mission to help people talk to their grandparents while they're still here. Yeah. And find out about them and pass this legacy down to yeah. their children and their grandchildren. So that's my, that's what I'm trying to promote. And I just, and I need help with yeah. how to promote it. And so the, the things I look at with that is, and, and one of the things you'll learn about me is I, I don't get too excited about any products or programs because it, it, you never know what the market is going to take on or like or dislike. And so I try look, to look at everything objectively and say, 
okay, would people like this? How, how do we tell the story? How do we build it? So my first thoughts for this um, conversation are, what, how are you going to frame this that is going to be easy to understand for others in your lessons? What is the framework for that? How are you going to communicate it? Not everybody has a story about their name, right? And so how do you sort of build this conversation around, yes, you know people want to do this, but they've wanted to do it for a long time. How do you get them to actually act on making that next step? And so um, kind of things I start to just, the blocking and tackling and the framework of this plan, here's what our goal is. I want to tell, I want to create this lesson plan. Here's how I'm going to do it. Here's how I'm going to communicate it. And then how I'm going to advertise it. How are people going to find out? So you start to just walk down through the process and just logically br break it down. And that, that's sort of where my head goes right away is how, what is it about this that is going to be unique and different that people want to go, I want to go attend these classes and, and, and pay for them and all that stuff. Yeah, so I need help with that. Um, there's, you know, I'm just looking through my book. So it's really easy to write and easy to read. And I found this one picture. And this is, can you see this picture? Yep. This is my mother and my older sister and my younger brother standing next to a car. And I said, see that car? It's a Plymouth. I was born in that car. We couldn't quite make it to the hospital. So I have my whole book filled with things about my life that, that I think um, they could, they could uh, share. Here's another picture. Um, this is me playing the violin. So I have a granddaughter who's five and I'm teaching her how to play the violin. And I said, you see, this is me. I used to play the violin. And, and it's, with all that, the question becomes now, how do you, how do you create that, that structure for other people? because their lives are gonna be different the way they're- booked. Exactly. So, so base, basically what I do is I have them go through old, old photo albums and take some pictures. I mean, find some pictures because in the olden days we used to have photo albums mm -hmm. and we also have smartphones, but for the older pictures, you're gonna need actual photo albums. And I tell them to focus on one uh, one group of pictures, maybe their grandparents, and then find some pictures and write a little story about each one of them. For example, my grandpa died when I was just a baby, but I still remember pulling his hair, <laughs> you know, and yeah. uh, I, I show them, I, I, I found pictures of me growing up because I want my grandchildren to know that grandma used to be a kid once so I share all these stories normal about what I what a normal person right I was yeah 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 I'm not I wasn't always old you know yeah. Yeah. so um so how do I get them to do it well I start off with a consultation and they're all excited about it um because they all have wanted to do it so I guess I'm the impetus I say okay start gathering some pictures and come back to me and we can talk about what kind of captions would be meaningful because I was a writing teacher for 40 years. So I know how to do that. Yeah. So, um, and then, uh, you know, uh, but I'm still trying to get the word out. Yeah. And, and that's what I need somebody that, like you. What? How do you do that so you don't have, you know, a call every 20 minutes all day long, every day with those things. That, that, that's sort of the, how do you monetize that and how do you scale it? So it's not just a one-to-one -one conversation, but it's a bigger platform that allows you to reach more people and have more people have access to your information. So you would know how to do that? Well, we could certainly we sit down and, and build the plan, right? Uh, but yeah, that that's sort of what I do is to figure out how do you take that, I'll say wet clay concept with the goal of reaching a bunch of people and, and putting a putting the plans in place. So uh-huh. Okay. Well, th that's really helpful. And um, uh, I understand you can't guarantee success yeah. when you when you work with somebody. But what? How? How would you measure? Um, are there any things that I that you could probably um, be successful at with my project? Because that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, and I would say that what you look at is you look at the first couple of calls that we have together is sort of building that that outlook of things. 
you know, and once we get into the more details of it, it's you look at it and say, okay, this is going to take us three or four months to figure out here's what that looks like. And then we put then the next step is, okay, by this date, we hope to have X amount out there or, or launched or whatever. And here's what it's going to cost. And so those, those first few weeks or months together, we sort of build that outlook of what it's going to look like. So until I get into the, again, time, money, what you have built, how does it work? What's the plans? Um, we try a few things. We look at it then you sort of look at what the next three six to six months look like. Um, and we put, and we just put goals in place for the, for the business. Uh -huh. Do you know, um, I keep hearing about sales funnel. Yes. I don't know what that means. Do you? <laughs> yes. It means reach a lot of people and get some sales out of it. <laughs> okay. Well, that's a good answer. So, so uh, Justin, I, I, uh, I looked you up and you seem absolutely amazing. Um, and um, uh, I'm hoping that, that a lot of people will find what you said useful. I hope so. Uh -huh. So I want to know how can people contact you? Uh, they can go to my website, spatulaconsulting.com. Justin, this was absolutely incredible.